Hello, once again, I am Engineer Asuncion, your instructor for the subject statics of rigid bodies. This is actually my first video in this uh, YouTube channel, but hindi naman ako YouTuber. Uh, but we're gonna be using the YouTube for uh, the access of uh, the videos that will be uploaded for the offline classes who do not have a secure or strong connection, internet connection. Okay, so. This is also going to be favorable for all of you students who are using the data as an internet connection because the by YouTube has YouTube is refreshing your uh, subscription every day in each promo that you register sa inyong mga phones uh, sa iba't ibang networks. Okay, so uh, for this video since holiday bukas and on Tuesday, I'm gonna do a lecture on the introduction of the uh, forces, the, the first chapter of our module and the, the Newton's three laws of motion. Okay, so let's now discuss the fundamental concepts from the lesson one of this module, the statics of rigid body. From last meeting, we have already defined what engineering mechanics is, or basically the, the term mechanics. So you have already understood the things, the basic concepts, that are being entailed to this uh, science okay and i have also shown you this diagram the diagram of engineering mechanics so these are the subdivisions of this subject okay so ipinakita natin we have presented what are the things to be discussed in these four subdivisions of engineering mechanics and this subject statics of rigid bodies being your first uh, proper introduction is basically an intricate way of explaining or of um of showing you the things that you have learned from physics from last year or from your last term okay so the things that you have learned from physics babalik lang ulit dito yun makikita nyo lang sila ulit okay so we now go to the fundamental concepts or or what we call the factors that will be affecting your solutions and analysis of certain systems eventually Number one is length. Hindi na bago sa inyo to. Length is just basically a a distance, for example, or geometric properties. So th these are needed to locate positions of a certain point or a body, which will be analyzed eventually in a certain physical system. Okay. Number two, this uh, time. Time is a measurement of or a measure of succession of events. So in your dynamics later. Uh, dynamic subject or the dynarib this is going to be a very important factor because again as what we have said in the dynamics of rigid bodies we're going to be dealing with changes changes that are occurring or yes occurring when a body is in motion or in an accelerated motion number three mass um, mass is just basically a quantity of matter in a body and weight number five this refers to the gravitational attraction of the earth on a body or on a quantity of mass. I forgot number four, force. This represents the action of one body on another. So there's an action happening between both bodies, one or two bodies or more. Uh, you might have been asked itong question na ito in your physics. What's the difference between mass and weight? Again, we, we go to the definition of mass. Mass is quantity. Weight refers to the gravitational acceleration. So, how do we differentiate it? If we, uh, if we use our notebook, ito, um, let's say for example, uh, for example, this is you. Your weight in Earth, due to its gravitational acceleration, is uh, 40 kilograms. Yan ha. This is weight in Earth. And if you go to the moon, Wherein the gravitational acceleration, but the gravitational acceleration in Earth is 9.81 meters per square second. The gravitational acceleration in the Moon, sabi nila, is uh, one sixth yata of the gravitational acceleration of the Earth. So the question is, will your weight be the same? Is it going to be 40 kilograms also? The answer will be no if you are asking for the output of the weight or the, or, or the weight itself. Because sabi nga ng definition, this refers to the gravitational attraction. 
Okay? So, the weight will not be the same, but will the mass be the same? Will your mass on earth be the same on the moon? The answer is yes. This does not change from one location to another. Okay? So, baka itanong sa inyo yan, what's the difference between mass and, a and weight? You can use this example. Okay. Particle, a body with mass but with dimensions that can be neglected. Rigid body. This is a combination of large number of particles in which all remains at a fixed distance from one another. And for the concentrated force, this is the effect of the loading. This force which uh, represents the action of one body on another. So if, this, if it is a concentrated force, then it acts at a certain point. There are lots of forces that we're going to be dealing with as this uh, course progresses. Okay, so these are now the basic fundamental concepts or factors that we're going to be dealing with when we will analyze the statics of rigid bodies. So after knowing the basic fundamental principles, we now recall the Newton's three laws of motion. You have, you guys have already seen this from the physics. Ulitin lang natin. Now let's go over the Newton's three laws of motion, which I have already learned in the physics. Let's just uh, have a review. Uh, let's read the first law. Sabi dito in your module, the first law states that a particle originally at rest or moving in a straight line with constant velocity tends to remain in this state provided the particle is not subjected to an unbalanced force. How, how do we understand this? Uh, let's understand it this way. Sulat natin. Newton's third law of motion. Uh, three laws of motion, sorry. Number one states that particle originally at rest will be at rest or will be in that state provided that it's not being subjected to an unbalanced force. Actually, class, the Newton's first law of motion can also be called as the law of inertia. How do we understand this law of inertia or the first law of mo uh, Newton's law of motion? First, we should define what inertia is. Yeah. What is inertia? Okay, let's understand it this way. Imagine you have a bowl, you have a boulder in front of you. Yeah, mabigat yan. This is a boulder with um, shadow, shadow. And this is you. If you try to exert an effort, uh, whatever amount of force you try to apply, mahirapan kang galawin yan. Why? Because uh, it's so big, di ba? Compared to you who is small and who cannot really exert that amount of of effort for this boulder to move. So, hindi yan gagalaw. But if you have a small stone in front of you, yan, these are your feet. May maliit na stone dyan. Pag sinipa mo, eh, syempre gagalaw yan. Di ba? So, what are, what, what can we understand from this? Uh, you focus on the two objects here. Okay, so you focus on these things, on the objects. Uh, these things want to stay where they are. Diba? They, they, they do not want to move. Hindi, naman, hindi sila gagalaw unless there's a certain force being exerted on them. Then they will move. Tama? So it's like they're being lazy. Yan, we, we use that term, lazy. Yan. Things are being lazy unless there's an effort being applied to them. Okay, so actually that's the first rule of physics. Eh? Uh, Things want to stay where... Yeah, let's, let's use that phrase. Or that sentence. Things want to stay where they are. To stay where they are. So, sir, how, how do they move? What are the processes for them to move? Siyempre, you exert an effort. So, uh, if, if we think of it theoretically... Diba? If, if we apply this first rule of physics, we, uh, we dive into this. Pag sinipa mo itong bato, hindi eh, ba gagalaw lang yan ng gagalaw? This will continue to move forever and ever until it stops because of certain effort or, or because of some, some unbalanced force which makes it to stop. But in reality kasi, if you, if you kick this uh, stone, this will, this will continue to move but then it will stop eventually because of what we call resistance. So, what are these resistance or resisting factors? 
siguro because of air, or, di ba? May hangin, air resistance, or, or the ground. This is the ground, the rough surface, ground surface, or even some obstacles. Obstacles. Yeah, so these things, these factors are applying forces or apply, exerting effort to, to these objects if we are in Earth. But if you think, if, think of it this way, halimbawa, we, nasa outer space ka, and then sinipa mo yung bato, di ba, this, it will continue to move and move forever and ever because there are no resistance or resistances or resisting factors in the outer space. So uh, we can actually rephrase this uh, this uh, statement of physics now things want to stay where they are into things things want to keep doing what they are already doing so it's still being lazy diba? If, if we still incorporate this term lazy or laziness because of the things that we have discussed so class uh, the physicists have other terms for this laziness this laziness, yung kung babalikan natin, the, uh, this boulder doesn't want to move. It just wants to stay where they are or it keeps doing what, they, what it's already doing. It's being lazy. And we can now uh, think of this term or we can now define this laziness as inertia. So that is the first in the Newton's three laws of motion. Ngayon, uh, let's understand the second law of motion. Let's write it here. Uh, number two, the second law of motion. If we go to the module, let, again, let's read the module. The second law, it states that a particle, of, a, a particle of mass M acted upon by an unbalanced force, F, experiences an acceleration, A, that has the same direction as the force and magnitude that is directly proportional to the force. It is the basis of most of the analysis in dynamics. So, in the second law, you will be dealing with a lot of this in your dynamics. But actually, you have been dealing with this ever since in your physics. Let's understand it this way. The, the Newton's second law of motion can be stated also, or, or we can utilize the mathematical formula as, you may have seen this, force is equal to mass times acceleration. Have you heard this? May the force be with you, diba? So let's understand it this way. This is you, and this is a swing. Merong swing dyan na dalawa. And tumupo yung dalawa mong kapatid, the, the one who is thin, and the one who is not thin. Diba? So if you apply the same amount of force, uh, what will happen? You can use your imagination, di ba? If you apply a certain force on this uh, swing, nandito yung payat mong kapatid, eh di gagalaw yan. But common sense, if you apply the same force dito sa medyo hindi payat mong kapatid, eh di, konti lang yung galaw. Di ba? So, what does this mean? Um, if you apply the same amount of force, with, but with different mass, you will produce a different acceleration. Yes? The same is true if you have one set of, uh, just one swing. Yan, dito yung payat mong kapatid and this is you. If you apply a small force, so the acceleration will also be small. Yes? But if you apply a larger force, then the acceleration will also be larger. So that's just basically, that's the second law of motion. Uh, we're now familiar with the relationship between the force, the mass, and acceleration. Okay, so ganun lang kasimple, the second law of motion. Now, for the third law of motion, the, let's read the third law of motion. Sabi dito, The mutual forces of action and reaction between two particles are equal, opposite, and collinear. It will be our basic in understanding of force that forces always in pair of equal magnitude and opposite forces. We have two terms here, the action and reaction. Okay. Uh, sulat natin dito, action, reaction. In a certain action, there's an opposite reaction or a certain reaction. Okay. Imagine this is you. Mm, if you drop a ball, so a tennis ball, on the ground, so what will happen? Di ba, We zoom in. If this is the ground, 
and ground. And a tennis ball has been dropped. So, yan na yung tennis ball. Hindi ba the ground is supposed to be reacting this way? Medyo kunwaring may bending because of the force, the downward force due to the gravity of the tennis ball. So, in every action, sorry, in every action, this time the action is the dropping of the ball, there is an opposite reaction. And this time, the reaction of the ground. From the ground. Okay? So, the action, reaction. Also, imagine sa bicycle. If you are riding a bicycle, ito na lang. Para ba mag-draw ng bicycle? Yan. Uh, that's the bicycle. Okay, this is you. Yan. So, papadyak ka. Diyan yung dalawang gulong. In every action of your of your one foot, sa pedal, in every action of your one foot, it makes the it makes the wheels go uh, move forward, diba? It has a reaction. The wheel has a reaction. So in every action, there is a reaction. And whatever the amount of force this is, syempre, yun din yung amount of force na igagalaw ng bicycle to either move forward or kung patras yung galaw ninyo. Okay, you got the point. Okay, so uh, these are now the summary or this is how we understand the Newton's three laws of motion. Uh, first, the, ano yung una? the law of inertia, right? So we have understood what inertia is. Basically, it's just the laziness of the objects that, are, that, that, want, objects that want to keep doing what they're already doing. Or again, yung statement nga, the first rule of physics, things want to stay where they are. Okay? Unless we apply a certain unbalanced force. Number two, force is equal to mass times acceleration. Do not forget about this formula or you have already seen this in the formula. F is equal to MA. The larger the force, the larger the acceleration. And, and uh, you use this illustration okay, for you to understand. And for the third, the action, reaction. Okay, all of these things will be entailed, will be again uh, used, utilized. In all of the solutions from all of your mechanics subject, not, not just in the statics of rigid bodies, but also in the dynamics and even in fluid mechanics, and eventually in hydraulics. Okay, so uh, in our uh, next lecture, we now do the four systems. Thank you.